Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for coming and welcome to this very special event, the unveiling of the Gallaudet Monument. This has been a long time in the making and many of you may not know the history behind the monument, but when we found it, it was actually in pieces on the back of campus behind our auto body shop. This beautiful treasure, this piece of history, lied in ruin behind the auto body shop and we couldn't leave it that way. So over the past few years, thanks to so many generous people, specifically our alumni, they helped to make this a reality. And today, it is here before us. So many of us worried about the weather. We were unsure of whether or not there would be rain. And I want to let you know that back in 1925, when we celebrated the unveiling of the Gallaudet statue, it rained. Again, in 1953, when we set up our Founders Memorial in Hartford, it rained. So today, here we are. It may rain, it may not, but we will survive. If it rains this afternoon, I'll consider it a success. It'll have rained every day we've unveiled a monument. Today, we just celebrated our Founders Day, which actually is April 15th, 1817, but next week is spring break, so I wanted to make sure we had the opportunity to honor our founders, and so we hosted that celebration earlier this morning. I dressed up as Laurent Claire for the celebration, and I think we also have Thomas Calumet here with us today in the back. Welcome, Thomas Calumet. Also, we have Thomas Calumet, who met the very first student here at ASD, Alice Cogswell, and she is here with us today. Also, welcome, Alice. Today, I am so honored and proud to have several very distinguished guests with us. We have Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz. Lieutenant Governor, thank you for joining us today. We also have our amazing representative from West Hartford, Adrian Billings. Thank you for joining us today. We also have a wonderful individual who helped us with the restoration of this monument, Francis Miller. Thank you, Francis, for joining us today. He's in the back. We also have our landscape architect with help, who helped with all of the aesthetics here, John Stewart. Thank you, John. When we decided to restore this monument, we found that most of the pieces were intact with the exception of just a few, and Francis will speak to that in just a little while. But there was one piece that was cracked, and it was the hand finger spelling of the word Gallaudet. And it was quite a challenge for us to determine how we could recreate that finger spelling of the word Gallaudet. So we searched high and low for an artist that could work with us, and we wanted a deaf artist. So we reached out to Gallaudet University, and they connected us with a very talented individual from Minnesota, Stephen Peterson, who is here with us today to witness his work. He has not yet seen his work in its entirety, but he's here with us today. Thank you, Stephen. I also would like to thank the many people from West Hartford, the Historical Preservation Committee from the town of West Hartford, who was committed to making this a reality. Thank you also to our board of directors, many of whom who are here with us. Thank you for your continued support. I also see that State Representative Kate Farrar is here with us today. Kate, where are you? Thank you so much for joining us.
Now, you're going to learn quite a bit of history this morning, but before we go through the history, I'd like to invite our Lieutenant Governor, Susan Beisowitz, who is here with us once again today, representing the state of Connecticut. She has been an amazing supporter of our school. We would not be here without her support and the support of the state of Connecticut. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. representative up here and our amazing councilwoman up here because I am going to have them read the government proclamation that we have from uh, Ned Lamont. So Adrian, Kate, come on up and I'm going to give each of you the opportunity School for the Deaf, first founded in 1817, created a true path to education access for deaf children throughout the United States by establishing the first permanent school for the deaf in America and by creating a new standardized language, American Sign Language. And whereas the American School for the Deaf 
has led the way in finding innovative ways to support the deaf community, remaining the world leader in deaf education over 200 years after its establishment. And whereas in 2000, in 22, the, AS, the ASD is celebrating the 205th anniversary of its founding, and the school is proud to be the oldest continuing special education program in the United States. And whereas ASD continues to explore innovative teaching methods while incorporating state-of-the-art technology into the classroom. Yeah. And the state workers And whereas ASD recognizes that every child is unique and strives to meet the needs of each individual student by using the method of communication that works best for them, integrating an American Sign Language and English bilingual, bilingual approach on campus. And whereas ASD focuses on student potential and opportunities, providing students the tools they need to succeed not only in school, but in life. And whereas students who graduate from the ASD go on to become national and international leaders, professionals, and artists. I'm obviously not Ned Lamont, <laughs> governor of the state of Connecticut in celebration of the American School of the Deaf's rich history and its proud record of achievement do hereby officially proclaim the week of April 4th through 8th, 2022 as Deaf Heritage Week in the state of And thank you, distinguished female public servants, for helping us. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh. And now I'd like to invite our councilwoman, Adrian Billing Smith, representative of this beautiful town of West Hartford, and a rise up and rising star, I have to say. She's also come to our school and provided wonderful presentations on diversity for both our staff and students. So it's my pleasure and honor to have Adrian here to give a proclamation on behalf of the town of West Hartford. You get it. Again, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Bayowitz, for your beautiful words. Um, and I definitely echo those. I also would like to say hello again to Representative Kate Farrar, and thank you for representing the West Hartford delegation, who's amazing and been so supportive of this community and especially the ASD community. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adrian Billing Smith and I represent the Town Council of West Hartford as a member. I'm on here on behalf of Mayor Sherry Cantor today and the entire council. Mayor Cantor sends her, her regrets for not being here and her gratitude for this meaningful and beautiful memorial. She would like to thank Jeff and all the dedicated staff and volunteers that make a difference in their students' lives, provide support for alumni, and a resource for the town and the country and a treasured member of the community. I would like to extend my gratitude to Executive Director Jeff Raymond, the board members, the ASD executive team, and the entire ASD community. And I echo the words of Mayor Cantor. Not only am I grateful to be able to attend the unveiling of this memorial, I'm abundantly grateful to call you all family. Since the moment my mother came to this community, I have felt nothing but love and respect for me. Your dedication to your students, your staff, and teachers is undeniable. 
Your recognition and commitment to creating an accepting and inclusive community speaks volumes. Continue to strive for excellence. Continue to dig deeper and do better. <clears throat> Continue to honor your past <clears throat> and build a better future for all of us. Build a future where we can continue to work together and build community, respect, understanding, and empathy. Because ASD is an integral piece to this puzzle of humanity. Not only to the town of West Hartford or the state of Connecticut, but the world. Thank you for having me today. And with that said, I'll read the proclamation on behalf of the Andrew King. From the town of West Hartford, the official proclamation, whereas the American School for the Deaf created a land of equal opportunity and acceptance for deaf people throughout our country, and whereas the American School for the Deaf, an esteemed institution in our community, has been a cherished neighbor in West Hartford for more than 200 years, and is in its third century of service to deaf and hard of hearing children, youth, and adults. And whereas the American School for the Deaf boasts an honor role of productive citizens and successful professionals among its graduates in the greater Hartford area. And whereas the American School for the Deaf will celebrate its 205th anniversary of its founding during special campus ceremonies during the week of April 4th through April 8th, 2022. And whereas the American School for the Deaf continues to explore innovative teaching methods while incorporating its state-of-the-art technology into the classroom. And whereas the American School for the Deaf focuses on student potential and opportunities and development of the whole child intellectually, emotionally, physically, and socially. Whereas the American School for the Deaf provides its deaf and hard of hearing students with the tools they need to succeed, not only in school, but in their futures in which they are always able. And uh, whereas the American School for the Deaf will formally reflect on its history and its community of founders, alumni, students, and staff during April of 2022. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on behalf of the Town, of, town Council and the residents of West Hartford, I, on behalf of Mayor Sherry Kinter, <laughs> do hereby recognize April 7th through the 11th, and it shall be suitably observed as Deaf Heritage Week in West Hartford. Which you be for <laughs> Thank you so much, Adrian. We are so grateful that you're here with us. And thank you again, Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz, for your beautiful words and your ongoing support of our school and also the support of the state of Connecticut. Today, as we unveil this monument, this is not only honoring our past, but also honoring our future. Joining me today is an, a soon to be graduate of ASD who will come up to share the history of the monument before we unveil it, Usman Ghani. Do you want me to do this? Yeah. Oh, no, you sure? Are you familiar? Super used to him. So I watched. You I watched. Yeah. yeah. I don't. <laughs> Do you mind? Yeah. That would be great. Perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Usman Ghani. This is the sign for Monument. I'm so proud and honored to be here. This monument honors ASD's co-founder, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, who courageously set out to establish a school for the deaf 
in America. After a humbling trip to Europe to learn about the methods of teaching deaf students, Gallaudet fatefully encountered Lorraine Claire, a teacher at the French Institute for the Deaf in Paris. Gallaudet enlisted Claire to return with him to Hartford to establish the school. The rest, as they say, is history. First erected in 1854 on ASD's Asylum Avenue campus, the Gallaudet Monument was deemed one of the most beautiful monuments of its kind in the United States. Funds and artists for the project came from within the deaf community and the monument embodied the community's pride and accomplishment. When ASD moved to our current West Hartford campus in 1919, the monument was dismantled. The pieces remained in storage until 2019 when the ASD Alumni Association voted to restore it following a significant donation from an alumna. This project once again was made possible by the deaf community. Thank you, everyone. Perfect, thank you. That was really too, that was so helpful. Thank you, that was perfect. Okay. Are we ready to see this beautiful monument? Even though that monument has been here in place for several months already, it is so inspirational to be here at this formal unveiling. This is a piece of our history that is now with us on campus once again. I'd like to invite our next presenter, Barbara Kassin. She is an alumni of ASD and also serves on the ASD board as vice president. Barbara, I'm so honored to have you here to speak on behalf of the board. Barbara Casson. Do you want to do that? Yes, I can read you. I'm overjoyed already. This is beautiful. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to celebrate with you the unveiling of the restored Gallaudet Monument. I am proud to be here representing not only the ASD Board of Directors and Community of Alumni, but also the greater deaf community. The Gallaudet Monument was first erected in 1854 in tribute to Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet who is ASD's co-founder and also its first principal. Mm -hmm. Deaf education began in America with the founding of the American School for the Deaf here. This would not have been possible if not for the courage, dedication, and commitment that Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet gave. He is revered as the founder of deaf education. Because of Gallaudet's demonstrated commitment to deaf education, 
It was important to the members of the deaf community to honor him. Funds and artists for the original project in the 1850s came from within this community and the monument embodied our pride. When ASD moved from Hartford to our current West Hartford campus, the monument was dismantled. It was remained in storage until 2019. At that time, in 2019, the ASD Alumni Association committed to the restoration of the monument, which was helped by a significant donation from our alumna. Mm -hmm. This project once again was made possible by the deaf community and I am so proud and honored to be here today with you. Thank you. Beautiful. As you've seen, this monument project would not be possible without the support of the alumni. And I'm pleased and honored to have your Alumni Association President, Sandra McLennan, here with us today. Do you want me to do this? Uh, I had talked to her about it. Do you want, are yeah, you, yeah, are you good? Did. You've talked okay. to her about it? I'll hold it. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. She's easy. Wow. What a special, special day, and what an honor to be here. Hello, everybody. To Lieutenant Governor Bysiewicz, Councilwoman, Representatives, Gallaudet's family, Laurent Claire's family, ASD Executive Director Jeff Braven, ASD Board President Jonathan Rubin, ASD Board, Deaf Vice President. Barbara Casson, class of 1975. To ASD board, ASD administrators, students, educators, and staff, alumni, and supporters. I am Sandra McLennan, American School for the Deaf alumni president And I am thrilled to be here with you today to recognize this momentous occasion. I'd like to share a brief story with you. I happened to be looking online and one day a video caught my eye. This video was made back in 1913. It was of a deaf gentleman who had graduated from ASD. His name was John Hotchkiss. And to see that video back in 1913, the signs that he used from back in those days were beautiful. He talked about Laurent Claire and Thomas Gallaudet and this came from the National Association for the Deaf. They wanted to present to talk about a story about Thomas Gallaudet and Laurent Claire. So Thomas Gallaudet and Laurent Claire shared a conversation and said, Claire, would you like to have a monument made in your honor? And Claire smiled a bit and said, I would absolutely love to have a monument. And I would be inspired if we had two monuments, one for each of us, facing each other, so that we could have a continual ongoing conversation. I know if Thomas Gallaudet and Laurent Claire were here with us today, they would be so proud to see the Lieutenant Governor, Councilwoman, 
Adrian Billings, representative of West Coast, alumni, student, educator, and staff here all gathered together today. Thank you, Claire, and thank you to Thomas Galliard. Finally, in closing, I'd like to invite Francis Miller, who helped with restoration of that monument, to give a brief background and history about the monument. And then, after that, you'll have the opportunity to come and see and enjoy this beautiful monument for yourself. And thank you so much, Francis, for all of your hard work. really rewarding opportunity of working on a diverse array of objects. But this has to be one of the dearest monuments I've had the opportunity to treat. Um, it's such a meaningful monument, not only to the incredible man that it's erected for, but also for the meaningless for this community and the continuation of the building of the deaf community in the nation. And I think it's just a wonderful object and monument and beacon for, for Hartford, Connecticut, and the country. Um, I had the great opportunity of working with a wonderful landscape architect, um, John Stewart, and he um, was able to design this wonderful area that echoed the original setting of the monument. The uh, light uh, standards here uh, echo the original iron fence around the monument when it was in Hartford. And it's a beautiful incorporation of the monument now. It's passed and ties in for the, in the entire area. It's a wonderful design. Um, the monument itself, the original objects are mostly the marble. It's the lighter colored stone. So the plaque you see in the lower base the column and the upper globe are all original from 1854. They were cleaned, injected, they, some of the material was fragile, so I applied stone consolidants that gave it better strength. Um, and then that will enable them to withstand more of New England's awful weather, hopefully for decades and decades to come. The lower stone is the granite from Vermont, Barry, Vermont. It's an extremely strong and durable stone that will last centuries without any issue. In the future, if we have to replicate other objects in the monument, we can, they can be replicated in the gray granite so the monument can continue for millennia into the future. But for now, we have this wonderful um, recognition of the old monument, the new components coming together as a single monument. But the most rewarding part of this was working with the deaf community and the artist Stephen Peterson in the recreation of the signing Gallaudet in the relief sculpture here on the lower base. It was such a privilege and pleasure working with Stephen and um, we all could be more thrilled when we opened the box that he had shipped from Minnesota with the plaster model. Uh, when the crate came off the top, everyone uh, there that was there to witness it was stunned. It's such a beautiful piece. And then that model was used to cast the bronze sculpture that's here now. So it was a great privilege for me to work with um, the university and I'm so, so indebted to the Alumni Association for taking this on. It's been a great project. And hopefully I can get students to carry on, not only when a monument's finished, maintenance is always needed to keep it going and keep it in good condition. And I'd love to be able to train students here to carry that on so that the universe, so the school, the ASD and the students here can maintain the monuments on the campus for the future generations to enjoy. Thank you so much. So I recall back when we started this project in 2019 and I met Francis, 
for the first time, I remember asking him, there are so many pieces. Can we possibly rebuild this? And he assured me we could and that it would be beautiful. And here it is a reality today. Thank you, Francis. Thank you to our alumni for their continued support. I see so many of them working with our museum and have worked so hard to make this a reality. Thank you to the town of West Hartford. This has tremendous impact and is a treasure for our town and for America. Thank you for joining us today.